Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. So the case we are covering today involves a person that was kind of a YouTuber, but also a reality TV star, which is not something that you come across every day when you cover these kinds of cases. So the kind of content that this person would post on YouTube was fitness content, but it wasn't like regular fitness content. It was sexual fitness content to be exact. I'm Matt Shaman. Today we're going to be doing a 20 minute explosive sex exercise. But then, like I said, this person is also a reality TV star and I have no idea how popular this TV show was. I don't even know if it aired in the UK. I, I just don't know. But this person was a cast member of the reality TV show Gigolos and it was a reality show on Showtime and it it ran from 2011 to 2016. And the name of this YouTuber slash reality TV star was Ash Armand. And it turns out that Ash Armand was a pretty big character on that show. Where are you visiting from? Memphis. Memphis. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. But in the end, the show got cancelled, but Ash still craved that popularity, that fame that the show gave him. So that's when he started dabbling in businesses and YouTube. It's better than Viagra, first sexually activating yourself. And he also started offering various online services, which we will obviously get into, but none of it really took off. And ultimately, Ash went down a very, very dark path. His drug use increased, his personality just completely changed, and a more violent side started to emerge. And it all ended in a horrific, gruesome murder. Like truly, the, the murder in this case Wow, it's shocking. I was not expecting it. So that is what we are covering today. Today's case is definitely a bit of an unusual one. So let's jump in. I just wanted to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor and that is Mooncat. So I'm sure most of you are aware, but if you are not, I absolutely love nail polish. It is one of my passions. It's a hobby of mine. My nail polish collection is so huge. And every single true crime and makeup video, I try and match my makeup and my nails, if you haven't noticed. And you guys might remember me talking about Mooncat nail polishes a few months ago because they are one of my favorite nail polish brands. The thing I love the most about Mooncat nail polishes is that they are so unique. The polishes that you can find at Mooncat, you can't find them anywhere else. They have the most beautiful, unique colors, unique formulas. All of Mooncat polishes are 100% cruelty-free and vegan. They are 10-free, which means they are free from harsh chemicals. And the reason why I am talking about Mooncat nail polish today is because their lunar sale has just started. So right now, you can get 20% off their entire website. Of course, I had to pull together some of the shades that I recommend you pick up in this lunar sale. My favorite shade that Mooncat have released recently is this shade here. Oh my god, this is called Full Scream Ahead, which is a holographic icy blue, but then it has this flip to it. Oh my god, it's so pretty. This shade I recommend to everyone, Sabretooth. I mean, this is the most beautiful like pastel blue, but then it has this gorgeous shimmer running through it. Perfect for spring and summer. We have Treachery in the blue, and this is not just an ordinary polish. Oh no, no. This is a thermal polish. So you paint it on and it's dark blue, but then it transforms to this gorgeous pale pink. And I'm like, what? And then this shade here, Midnight Drive, is for all of my purple lovers because purple is my favorite color. This is the most stunning purple I think I've ever seen. Have you ever seen a shade so pretty? No, I didn't think so. This is called Maelstrom and it's absolutely stunning on the nails. It is one of those shades that catches everyone's attention and you will get compliments on this shade if you wear it. And then of course, the shade that I am wearing right now, which is called Whiskey Sunrise, which is one of the most unique shades I think I've ever come across. And and this is the makeup that I am wearing in today's video. So you'll see how I created this look in today's case. And Mooncat are also launching a new shade for the sale that is permanent. And it is called Mercury in Retrograde. That is this gorgeous periwinkle blue that has this pink shimmer running through it. And it is also a magnetic shade that has a silver magnetic stripe through it. And that new shade is also in the sale. And I am so excited myself to shop this sale. And let me know in the comments down below what nail polishes you picked up because I'm nosy. I like to see what other people are buying. And I will pin a comment and tell you what I've picked up in the sale. Just in case if you're nosy and curious like me. So 
go over to Mooncat now and shop their Luna sale. But remember, you have to use the code LUNA20 at checkout for the discount to apply. They also offer worldwide shipping, which is free if you spend over a certain amount and they ship to over 70 countries. And the sale is running right now up until May 19th. And I will leave a link to the website in the description box down below. And using that link really does help out this channel because it lets Mooncat know that you came from this video. So thank you again to Mooncat for sponsoring today's video. But thank you to every single one of you watching right now, because truly without all of you guys, I wouldn't get opportunities like this. And now let's jump into today's case. Ash Armand was born in 1981. An exact date of birth is not known. And he was born in New Delhi, India, where he lived with his parents and his two siblings. So Ash Armand was actually born Akshaya Kubiak, but he changed his name later on in the case. So just to save confusion, I'm just going to call him Ash Armand. And growing up, Ash had a pretty different background, if you want to call it that. His parents were very focused on spiritual traditions. His mom was Asian Indian and she was born in New Delhi and she was raised learning Eastern philosophies, alternative medicines, just alternative ways of living. And then Ash's dad was Polish American. He was born in the US and it is said that he was very intelligent. He accelerated through college at a very young age. He actually attended college younger than the normal age. And whilst his dad was at college, it was the time of the Vietnam War. And Ash's dad got into a lot of protests against the war. He became very much a like rebel activist. And to avoid being enlisted, he actually enlisted into the Peace Corps and he got shipped out to Korea and Japan to serve over there. And then whilst he was serving in Japan, that is how Ash's parents met. They soon went on to get married. They clearly then moved to New Delhi. And then this is where Ash was born. Ash was very much raised on these Eastern philosophies. He spent the first four years of his life surrounded by this. And then when Ash was four years old, the whole family then moved to Japan, which is where Ash grew up. That was where the rest of his childhood was. But whilst he was in Japan, Ash became a very sick child. He had pretty severe asthma, which completely affected his life. I mean, he couldn't breathe properly. He also developed scoliosis, which is when the spine curves to the side and it can cause pain and pressure on the lungs, making it difficult to breathe. So that alongside asthma, it just made everything even worse. So because of this, Ash spent a decent time in the hospital. Like he was always in and out. There just always seemed to be something wrong with him. And Western medicine just never seemed to work out for Ash. Like it never seemed to fix him. So because of this, Ash's mom put him on a routine of Eastern therapies. He focused on meditation, breathing. His mom was also a yoga instructor. So Ash did a lot of yoga when he was growing up. And eventually all of this seemed to work. It seemed to help with his breathing, seemed to help with just a lot of things. And Ash's health did improve. And Ash thought that this was a miracle. He never thought that he was going to be able to live a normal life with his asthma because it was so bad. So Ash thought that this was a miracle and these Eastern therapies became a huge part of his life. Also throughout Ash's childhood, the family traveled a lot. I mean, the main place that they lived was Japan. However, his dad was born in the US, so they did have family in the US. So they were traveling back and forth between the US and Japan. The family actually did live in Maine for a short period of time. And let's just say along the travels, Ash's family came into contact with some interesting people. And these people were interested in an alternative way of living. And there was a group of them and this group of people would get together. They would hang out and discuss the ways of the world. And this group of people consisted of very intelligent people, scientists, artists, poets, just academically intelligent people. And they would gather and they were from all over the world. It was an international group and I don't know what they're called. They would also practice the teachings of Tantra. And I'm going to be completely honest here. I don't know anything about Tantra. I try to do a little bit of research, but please correct me if I'm wrong. But I read that it's, quote, an ancient Indian religious movement that seeks to harness a wide variety of experiences and mental and physical energies for the use on the path to enlightenment. It also means to be woven together and there is a strong focus and emphasis on sexuality. People practice Tantra to weave the spiritual and the physical together. And that's all I know. So was there this sexual, physical, spiritual element to these people? I just do not know. 
However, what we do know is that Ash's parents were very involved with this group of people and their interest in this alternative way of living. And Ash spent a lot of his childhood surrounded by this kind of people, this group. Ash would be taken to these meetings. He had to sit and listen to things that possibly were not child friendly. But then also at these meetings with these people, Ash was exposed to a lot of childhood abuse. Ash was beaten by this group of people, particularly his godfather. But he was beaten by a lot of people in this group. There would be harsh physical punishments for a child doing something wrong. And I don't have any examples for you. Just know that there is physical abuse going on in this group. And I don't know about any of you, but this sounds like a cult. And that is what I've been hinting at all along. This group of people looking at this alternative way of living and all of these intellectual people from all over the world coming together to find enlightenment. Sounds like a cult. But also the children in this group would be beaten if they did anything wrong. And when I was reading this, I was like, wow, what in the Anne Hamilton burn is this? Ash was also sent to a so-called training camp in Kyoto, Japan. And this so-called training camp was based on a horse ranch. And it was ran by what I have read was a bitter, angry, alcoholic farmer. And again, this farmer was abusive to Ash and he would physically punish Ash. And I'm just like, wow, is this just another branch of the cult? Why is Ash as a child being sent to live on a random horse ranch with an alcoholic abusive farmer? That sounds dodgy as hell. So all in all, Ash was basically raised in a cult. That's what it sounds like. I have no confirmation of that. Ash himself hasn't called this group or anything like that a cult, but I'm sorry, this is a cult. It's a cult-like group, whatever. But Ash was basically raised in this weird kind of environment. And Ash has said at a later date when he's an adult that his upbringing, the things that he was exposed to, had a very negative effect on his life. So now we get to Ash in his teenage years and he did decide to break away from this group. And he decided that he just wanted to make it on his own. So he first decided that he wanted to work in the field of Chinese medicine and follow on from what his mom started to teach him as a child. So he left school at 16 and he took an apprenticeship to learn and the traditional discipline of Qigong. And this involved a lot of meditation, healing through breath work and herbs, which is very similar to what he was raised doing. He also studied Zen Siatsu, which is a form of massage combined with philosophy. And he spent a lot of his 20s working as a massage therapist. And he traveled all over the world doing this. He went to Thailand, Costa Rica, Europe, India. And I think he was kind of learning a along the way as well, like learning, picking up different things from different countries and different cultures and just kind of combining it all together. Also around this time, he became very involved in the psychedelic trans community. He would go to huge events where loads, hundreds of people would gather in the woods and they would take a load of drugs, as the name suggests, a load of psychedelic drugs. And they would listen to trance music. And Ash was loving life. He was so happy. He was so free. And I'm, to be honest, I'm not surprised. Getting away from that cult was probably liberating. And friends around this time have described Ash as just like innocent, caring, loving life, bubbly, happy. He clearly has gone through some stuff as a child, but he's overcome that. People didn't think that there was a bad bone in his body. It was also around this time in his 20s that Ash entered into his first serious relationship. And we don't know the woman's name. Ash has said that with this woman, he was having a lot of unprotected sex and she ended up getting pregnant, which was not planned. And Ash has his first child. And even though Ash and the mother of his child, they don't stay in a relationship together. It is said that Ash was a great father. He was actually caring, attentive. He provided for his son financially. But then it was becoming a father that Ash realized that he needed a change of career. He was obviously working as a massage therapist, but it didn't give him a steady income. He needed more stability now that he had a child. He had somebody else to provide for. So Ash decided to enter into a different line of work. And the fact that he changed careers put him on the path that would ultimately land him in the TV show 
gigolos. So this is when Ash decides to become a model. He moved to New York City in the US. This was now his permanent home. He joined a modeling agency called Ice Models. He had a profile on Models Mayhem and he gained a little bit of success through modeling. He had a few jobs, but it was again very sporadic. Not steady income, which is what he was hoping for. And it was around when Ash was 30 years old that he thought, I don't think this modeling thing is working out. Like, should I just get up and leave? But then in 2011, when Ash was 30 years old, he got randomly contacted by a man called Garen James. And Garen James was a successful businessman. He had seen Ash's profile, like his modeling profile online, and he liked what he saw. He thought Ash would be a really good fit. And Garen asks Ash if he wants to become a gigolo. Now, a gigolo, if you are not aware, is basically just a male escort. The dictionary definition is actually, quote, a man who is paid by a woman to have sex with her or spend time with her. An escort doesn't necessarily mean sex. Like, it's not supposed to be sex. It's just paid for time. It's all very grey. Like, the lines are blurry. And the stereotypical client of a gigolo is an older, wealthier woman. But then again, that's just a stereotype. So who knows if that's actually true. And the term gigolo specifically refers to a woman seeking a man's company rather than a man seeking a man's company. So gigolo is literally just a woman hiring a male escort. And apparently the market for a gigolo is pretty small. When it comes to escorting, most clients are usually men seeking a woman's company or a man seeking a man's company. So Ash was approached by this man called Garen James and he ran his own escorting company called Cowboys for Angels. And based on Ash's physical appearance, Garen thought that he would be absolutely perfect for the job. Now, at first, Ash was pretty unsure, like when Garen approached him, Ash didn't even realize that there was even an industry for a gigolo. He didn't realize that there were women out there that would pay for a man's company. But Ash thought to himself that this could be a really good opportunity. He was looking for just something new because modeling hadn't worked out for him. And he thought, why not? What have I got to lose? If he didn't like it, if it didn't suit him, he could just leave. So this is when Ash packed his bags and made his way to Las Vegas. And this is where he was going to work and live for the rest of today's case. Now I listened to a podcast that Ash was on, which is so weird because this podcast episode, they were interviewing Ash because of his career and because of the reality TV show that he was ultimately on. And it was so weird listening to him before he commits the murder, you know? It was just so weird. Okay, so who am I? Uh, professionally, I work as a male escort for a company called Cowboys for Angels. But anyway, I listened to that podcast and Ash talked about his work as a gigolo and he said that his clients came from all walks of life. He talked about that some of his clients, they had recently gotten out of a relationship. They just wanted a distraction. Some of his clients were really powerful women that were just in Vegas on business and they wanted some eye cap Andy on their arm. They're just in Vegas. They want to go out and just have a crazy time and kind of have like a bodyguard slush like eye candy yeah. with them on their side. Also, some of his clients, they were just too busy. They didn't want a serious relationship and they just wanted some fun, just some company while they were in town. And Ash spoke about how the whole business worked, that it was obviously done through the agency, Cowboys for Angels. And the women that were the clients, they would enter into a contract agreement and Ash would be contracted to spend his his time with these women and it was always a minimum of four hours like no less than that i used to not even do two hours like minimum was four hours and then once everything had gone through like the contracts and everything and money was exchanged ash would then spend his time with his client. And this pretty much involved going on a date. And this date could be anything that the client wanted. They could go for a walk. They could go out for dinner. They could go to like a social event if the woman wanted a date. And Ash's services are pretty pricey. I mean, granted, I'm not exactly an expert in gigolos and everything and how much they get paid. But when I was looking at some of the prices, I was like, so the clients, women would pay $1,600 for four hours with Ash Armand, $3,000 for an overnight stay, and just, just wait for this next one, $25,000 for a whole week. I know, that's insane. That's an insane amount of money. What the actual hell? So yeah, 
Ash would sometimes just go on a four hour date, but these women could hire Ash or any gigolo from this agency or any other agency, whatever. You can hire a gigolo for a week or a day or two days, three days, whatever, but $25,000 for a week. That just tells you that the clients that Ash has are very wealthy. And then when it comes to the sex part, now, obviously this is a pretty gray area. It's not allowed to happen. In the US, paying someone for sex is illegal and this would be a crime. So technically there is no sex when it comes to gigolos or escorting. But does it happen? Yes. Because there's definitely loopholes, grey areas and stuff. So Ash and other gigolos in this agency would only charge clients for their company for their time. Payment in no way guarantees any sexual activity. Mm, that's not even on the table in the contract. But, and this is a big but, if the date that the gigolo has been on leads to sex, well, that's just a coincidence, if you know what I mean. At least that's the impression that I got from my research. And that's actually what Ash has said himself. Ash said that if he goes on a date with a woman and things go well, and Ash actually hits it off with the woman, well, then it may end up with them having sex. But that's nothing to do with a gigolo service. So interpret that how you want. Yeah, they, they have to sign a certain thing that's like, they're not contracting a sexual service so they can never expect that. You can't just like call up and be like, yo, I'm gonna wanna get banged. Yeah. Like, at that point, it's be? straight up prostitution, yeah. especially in the laws in America. So Ash was going about doing his gigolo work. And then a few months after he started in 2012, so Ash is still in his early 30s, he was asked if he wanted to join the reality TV show Gigolos. Now at this point, Gigolos was about to enter into its third season and the show follows five male escorts or Gigolos, hence the name of the show. And all the men that worked on the show, they were from the same agency, which was Cowboys for Angels, which was the agency that Ash worked for, which is obviously how he got the connection to the show. And the show was just like your typical reality TV show. It followed the lives of these five male escorts, like their interests, just their day-to-day, -day, what they did. And then it obviously showed the interactions that the men had with the clients that they had. And apparently each of the five men that were on the show, they were cast to be a very specific character. Each of the five men had their specific role and their specific personality that they had to portray on the show. So for example, there was the macho guy. There was the single dad guy. The show really just focused on one element of their personality and made that their whole personality. Does that make sense? It really made them two-dimensional. So when Ash was cast for the show, he was cast as the Zen meditation guy. He was the spiritual healer. He was the calm, the peace for one. And obviously this focused on his upbringing and also his career as a massage therapist. And I have no idea if the show was actually good or not. I couldn't find any ratings for it. It ran for six seasons, so it must have been pretty interesting. You guys are going to have to let me know if you watched it. But from what I read online, the show was very sex heavy. There was a lot of nudity in the show. It basically just was soft porn. That's what I've read online anyway. And there was no penetration shown, but it was insinuated and there was breasts, genitalia from both men and women. It, it was just a lot. And it definitely led to questions of the legitimacy of this show because this show is supposed to be reality TV. I mean, of course, we all know that reality TV is not actually reality TV. Pretty much every single reality TV show is so scripted. However, the show Gigolos seemed to take it to a whole nother level because people were questioning, well, the women that were on the show, they were supposed to be legitimate clients, but why would these legitimate clients want to go on the reality show Gigolos and pretty much get naked and have sex on TV? Like it just wasn't adding up. And it turns out that they were correct because the women on the show 
were actresses, porn actresses. The clients on the show were not real. So it pretty much just was soft porn. Nothing reality about the show at all. But the women actresses on the show, they would pretend to be clients. They would pretend to be housewives or business women just in town looking for a good time. And I've seen a few clips of the show, but you can see that there are a few clips of Ash. He's riding along in a car with the other male escorts. Like every weekend till I was like 10 years old, I used to go cruise up to the hills in Japan. And you can see him kind of like having this friendship relationship with the other male escorts and like talking about what they've done and everything. And then you also do see Ash going on these dates with these so-called clients. Where are you visiting from? Memphis. Memphis. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to put any of the clips into this video because copyright and everything, but I saw this one clip of Ash meeting with a client who had a fetish, I think, for vampires. It's a good thing that I like playing dress up. And then there was this whole role playing scene where this woman, she's in lingerie and she's lying in a coffin and Ash comes down, he's got his fangs in, he's got this cloak on and he comes down the stairs and he opens the coffin. It's all very dramatic. <laughs> it's also incredibly awkward because he goes down and he like bites the woman on the neck and then he helps the woman out of the coffin and it's, it's just very awkward, it's uncomfortable. And there are also various other sex scenes with Ash in the show. It shows at one point him having sex with a client in a bathroom. He was also seen having sex with a classical violinist and he was also participating in S&M. There was also one scene where four of the male escorts were meeting one woman and they're all having sex together. And as the show progressed over the years, Ash started to make a decent amount of money from it. His profile increased. He started to gain a lot of fans. His social media following is just going up and up. People would also fangirl over him. Like he had his little cult-like group of followers that literally worshiped the ground that he walked on. He had people creating fan pages for him on Instagram where they would post all of like topless photos of him and screenshots from the show. However, it is said that over time, as Ash was gaining in fame, popularity, and his following was increasing, his personality started to change. He started to become more and more fame hungry. Nothing was ever enough. He wanted more and more. But he also became very insecure about his appearance. He thought that the other male escorts on the show, they looked better than him. They had more muscles than him. So Ash Ash decided to start taking a load of steroids to really bulk up and oh my god did he bulk up. His muscles became absolutely massive and it is around this time as well when he was taking a load of steroids that Ash's ego went into overdrive. He became incredibly big-headed that he was famous, he looked great and he could do whatever he wanted. He started partying a lot, started to go to lots of parties and events that were like for celebrities in Vegas. He started really immersing himself into that world. He started dating a ton of different women. Most of the time they were either Instagram models or porn stars. It was also at this point that Ash decided that he wanted to be polyamorous. So he was in multiple relationships with multiple different women. And at this point as well, he started drinking a lot of alcohol and his drug use usage went through the roof. He started doing a load of cocaine, MDMA. He was also smoking a load of marijuana as well as drinking an excessive amount of alcohol. And this was the complete opposite of what Ash was like before the reality TV show. And you've got to remember that he is taking a load of steroids and his steroid usage as well is going up and up and up. And the steroids in particular, but just the cocktail of drugs and alcohol that he is on, it is said that it completely changed his personality. He went from someone that was quite careful caring, light, bubbly, to now he was pretty dark. He was angry and he had a violent side. For example, the parties that he would now go to for like D-list celebrities, Ash would quite often go to these parties and he would get into physical fights with other people over random, small, petty things. He also had a few run-ins with the law. He was arrested multiple times for drink driving. He even ended up spending some time behind bars. So Ash continues going off the rails and and he continues to chase fame in every avenue that he can. And now he turns his attention onto YouTube and he becomes a 
fitness YouTuber. Welcome to Sorry Fitness. Today we're gonna do a full body workout. Ash created his own YouTube channel called Ash Armand One, which is actually still on YouTube to this very day. There are not that many videos on the channel. I think there's around 10. I'm not sure if there was more on and he's taken some down, I don't know. But Ash started to upload fitness videos on YouTube, but his fitness videos were not your typical fitness videos that you can find on YouTube because Ash mainly focused on sexual fitness. I'm Ash and Mom. Today we're going to be doing a 20 minute explosive sex exercise. He had a series called Sexercise for Men where he posted 10 minute long fitness routines that pretty much just contain different variations of thrusting. I'm not joking there. I have watched some of these videos and it literally is just Ash thrusting in various different ways. It's honestly, it's cringy to watch and it's uncomfortable. He also has a video titled Juicing for Sex. Today we're gonna be juicing um, celery, carrots. It's better than Viagra for sexually activating yourself. Like literally after 10 minutes out of drinking, I always achieve an erection. Another one is called Training for the Bedroom. This workout is gonna be a bodyweight workout that will directly translate into the bedroom. And then one of his latest videos that is on YouTube is titled, quote, Ejaculation Control and Increasing Cum Volume Advice. So today we're making a video about ejaculation control and also how to increase your ejaculation volume. I've been getting a lot of requests, so I'll tell you what I do. I think Ash was just really trying to play off the back of Gigolos and trying to play off the role that he had on Gigolos. And some of his videos did get a lot of views. Some of the videos have like millions of views. So obviously he did see some success with his YouTube channel. However, this was still not enough for Ash. He wanted more. He started really focusing on Instagram as well, posting a load of content on Instagram and the longer the time went on, his Instagram posts started to get more and more revealing. He felt like he had to post more and more revealing photos of himself to gain more likes. He was always chasing the likes. He even started to dabble in the porn industry. He made made a few porn videos where he would be the massage therapist and he would give a quote happy ending. He also created an adult website called Lasotica, but that never took off either. He was also posting his like sexercise videos on this website as well. And he was just like chasing fame. Every single avenue that he could, he was chasing it. And then in 2016, the show Gigolos got canceled. And Ash was in his mid thirties at this point and his income drastically declined. He now struggled to get work because of the lack of his face on the TV. And he still did work as as a gigolo and his main work now as a gigolo was kind of like meet and greets. Like obviously he still did have certain clients that actually did want his services, but it mainly was just fans of the show wanting to meet him. But even still as time went on, that started to dwindle as well. And over the next couple of years, Ash just kind of struggled a bit. All of the money that he had made from the reality TV show, he just dwindled away. He never saved anything and he went completely broke. And then this is when we skip to 20. 2020. At this point, Ash is now approaching his 40s. He is still living in Las Vegas and he's currently living with a girlfriend that we only know as Lisa. However, Lisa is not the main focus of the rest of the video. Because at this time in 2020, this is when Ash met another woman by the name of Helene Delay. And very tragically, it is Helene that is the victim of today's case. Helene Delay was 29 years old and she was a college graduate with a degree in biological sciences. She had been raised in California by parents who had emigrated from India and she was the youngest of three siblings siblings. And Helene had the nickname Happy Helene because she was always happy. She was always smiling, cracking jokes. She was a bit mischievous. She was just the kind of person that if she walked in the room, she just had this energy about her that made you want to smile, made you gravitate towards her. And she has also been described as an incredibly caring person, very, very family orientated. She was extremely close with her parents and her sisters. She would speak to everyone, her parents and her sisters, 
every single day, sometimes multiple times a day. She was also incredibly close with her niece. And Helene had this routine where she would FaceTime her niece every single night before her niece went to bed. But it is also said that Helene, she had a lot of insecurities. She felt like she just didn't belong anywhere. Like she was just out of place. She was a bit lost in life. So in 2017, just after she graduated college, Helene decided that she wanted to take a little bit of a drastic step and moved to Las Vegas. She just wanted to try something new. She wanted something fresh. She hired herself a personal trainer at the Ace Fitness Gym. She lost 40 pounds in 30 days. She got herself in amazing shape. She started to feel good about herself. She gained a lot of confidence. And then because she loved the gym so much and because it kind of turned her life around fitness, she decided to become a trainer herself and her confidence only grew from there. She also got some jobs as a model herself and things were just looking really great for Helene. However, she still had her battles. She was still struggling a little bit with her mental health. She went through bouts of depression. And then in 2019, Helene announced to her friends that she had a tumor. Now I will say from my research, it's not entirely clear what Helene had and if she even had a tumor. Helene apparently told people that she had a brain tumor, but I've also read that some people said that it was a thyroid tumor. And it it's not even clear if she had cancer. Like, I just don't know. But regardless, she has something wrong with her physical health, whether that is a tumor, whether it's cancer, we just don't know, but she's clearly going through something. So then we get to May of 2020. And this is literally just after Helene has announced to her friends that she's battling this tumor. And obviously at this point, the whole world was in lockdown. And it was at this point when Ash Armand slipped into Helene's Instagram DMs. He just messaged her out of the blue. They had never interacted before this moment. He clearly just found Helene on Instagram somehow, liked what he saw, slid into her DMs, and they arranged to go on their first date. Now again, exactly how they met has also been disputed. Some people have said that Ash just slid into her DMs, asked her out on a date, and that is how they met. But then some people have also said that Helene was a client of Ash's. However, people close to Helene, like her friends and family, the people that knew her the best have said that she would never hire someone like Ash. Like that was not her thing. So how exactly they did meet is a little bit unclear. Your guess is as good as mine. However, what we do know is that they did meet somehow over Instagram and that they went on a first date and they hit it off. And from that first date, they started to communicate daily. And within a couple of weeks, they were infatuated with one another. And at this point, Ash still has his living girlfriend, Lisa. But we know that Ash has open relationships, but I don't know if Lisa knew about Helene and I don't know if Helene knew about Lisa. However, Ash kept saying to Helene that he was like, head over heels for her and that he wanted to spend every minute of every day with her. And Ash started to fill Helene's head with all of these big ideas that he had. Because Ash still in his mind thought that he could be really famous, really successful, really rich. And he was saying to Helene, oh, we can go into business with one another. I've got all of these ideas. Ash had visions of starting a TV show, which obviously I don't know, but I can imagine is not easy. He wanted to start a dating app. And he was filling Helene with all of his ideas saying that he was gonna be really rich. They could be rich together if they went into business with one another. He said that he was gonna start a business that would teach men how to get dates with women and how to use pickup lines and flirt and whatnot. Ash was always coming up with these extravagant ideas. He always had a million and one ideas on what businesses to do and how he was gonna get successful, but he had no execution. He didn't actually have the drive or the motivation to actually follow through with anything. He is the definition of all talk, no action. Because Ash, he still had no money, but he was filling Helene's head with just all of these crazy ideas. He also convinced Helene to undergo alternative treatments for the so-called cancer that she had. Helene reportedly started taking snake venom treatments. The pair also traveled to Utah for a spiritual getaway, during which Helene apparently had a breakthrough because she overcome some trauma, suppressed trauma in her life. And after the the pair got back from Utah from their little spiritual getaway, Ash decided that he was completely head over heels in love with Helene. Like he was done with his 
because of the relationship with Lisa. 100% his focus was on Helene. So he broke up with Lisa and now he was just solely dating Helene. So now we get to July of 2020, which is just six weeks into Ash and Helene's relationship. And this is when the case takes a very drastic turn. And I don't even know how to prepare you all for what is about to happen because it literally just comes out of the blue. There was no build up. There's just no making sense of what is about to happen. All we know is that on the 15th of July, 2020, at some point, Ash picked up Helene from the gym and they traveled back to his condo. They arrive at Ash's home. His ex-girlfriend, Lisa, is actually still living in the home because she hasn't managed to move out yet. And on this day, Ash was acting very strange and peculiar. He kept telling Lisa, his ex-girlfriend, that Helene had this horrible, dark, energy surrounding her and that someone needed to remove it. And Lisa thought that this was strange. She just didn't understand it. She was like, okay, is he being serious? Because she could see Helene and Helene definitely did not have a dark, horrible energy about her. Helene was all smiles. Lisa heard her talking to her family, her father and her sister, and Helene was just normal, laughing, chatting as if nothing was wrong. It was Ash that was acting weird and suspicious. Helene was just normal. However, in the end, Lisa just decided to ignore the situation and just kind of put it down to Ash and his quirks. And she left the condo. She actually went to stay somewhere else for that evening to give the couple some privacy. And then when Ash and Helene were on their own, the two of them went up to Ash's bedroom. The two of them took some mushrooms together alongside some other psychedelic drugs. They then lit some candles. They put the TV on. They actually watched Avatar. And they were supposed to have a relaxing spiritual evening together. However, at some point during that night, things went very, very wrong. And by the next morning, a horrific tragedy had occurred. Because the next day at 10.23 a.m., Ash made a call to 911 and he sounded absolutely frantic. The first thing he says on the call is, quote, this is going to sound insane because it is insane. And this is when Ash tells the 911 dispatcher that there is a dead body of a woman next to him. Ash told the 911 dispatcher that Helene was dead. Ash started rambling on to the dispatcher saying, I don't know if you've ever done mushrooms before, but I did some mushrooms and I was not in this reality. I was in a trans different reality. He said that himself and Helene had been praying together, that they watched Avatar together. And then all of a sudden there was a struggle between the two of them. Ash started to say that Helene attacked him first and that Ash, fearing for his life, attacked back. Police rush over to the home and what they found was a horror scene. And I truly mean that because they raced up the stairs and Ash was currently trying to perform CPR on Helene and he was covered head to toe in blood. But that was nothing compared to what Helene looked like. She was completely unrecognizable. Her face was black and blue and swollen. Her whole ear was just a bruise. Her hair was matted with blood. She was covered in cut and scratches, as well as deep lacerations that were definitely from a knife. Her body was also covered in candle wax. Two candles also stood above her body and they were also covered in blood. There was also a ceramic statue next to her body that again was covered in blood. The police asked Ash how Helene had gotten all of these injuries and Ash, again, with his self-defense story, just said, well, Helene attacked me first, so I attacked her back in self-defense defense. The paramedics were also there and they were trying to find any signs of life, but there was none. And this is when, tragically, 29-year-old Helene Delay was pronounced dead. Ash was immediately arrested and the police searched his condo where they found blooded clothes in the washing machine. They also found watered down blood in the bathroom and it was very clear that a cleanup attempt had happened. Police also found a packed suitcase which they assume indicated that Ash had maybe tried to plan an escape. They also found a knife hanging beside the bed as well as a pocket knife which the police assumed as murder weapons. 
And when they inspected Ash, he had no injuries, like literally not a scratch on him, no bruises, nothing. Nothing to indicate that it was Helene that attacked him first. So things were already not adding up. But the worst part, I have not even covered yet because Helene's body was taken in for an autopsy and her true injuries were revealed. And oh my God, this has to be one of the most brutal sadistic murders I've ever come across. Like her injuries are just unbelievable. The autopsy revealed that Helene's mouth was completely pulverized. Her gums had been shredded. Her teeth were broken and some were even missing. She had a fractured neck bone, a fractured rib, an abrasion on her ear that had a burn-like quality. She had stab wounds all over her face and her neck. There was so much evidence of blunt force trauma all over her body. There was blood in her lungs. There were bruises on her neck that correlated with her being strangled. On top of all of this, she also had hemorrhaging to the tongue, eyes, scalp, windpipe, arms, legs, nose and even her brain. But the most shocking discovery of all is that those missing teeth that she had, they were found in Helene's stomach. This was a brutal attack, a cold, sadistic, violent attack. She has so many injuries, but her cause of death was determined as a combination of blunt force trauma and strangulation. There is no way that any of the injuries to Helene were made in self-defense. So so Ash Armand was now arrested and charged with murder. And when Helene's family were informed of the murder, they were just in utter shock. They were so devastated. How has Helene been murdered in such a brutal way? And when it came to Helene's funeral, because her face especially was so disfigured, the family hired a specialist and Helene underwent 15 hours of reconstructive surgery to get her and her face in a decent state for there to be an open casket, which I can't even wrap my head around that. So what is happening with Ash? Well, he is denying all responsibility. He is still going with this, it was self-defense. He admitted to killing Helene, but he said it was in self-defense and that she attacked him first, which obviously given her injuries and his lack of injuries is definitely 100% not true. But Ash truly thought that he was going to be able to get off scot-free for this murder. And Ash's family were completely supporting him 100%. And this next bit really rubs me up the wrong way because Ash's family were going around begging for money for his defense. They went to his old escorting agent, begging him for money, but he refused. He was like, mm, no, 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 no. So then Ash's family set up a GoFundMe account to fund his defense. Ash's family were really acting like he was an innocent man wrongly charged with a murder. Like he was completely innocent. And on the GoFundMe page, they wrote, quote, one more morning in July, a very sick young woman died in Ash's home. He called 911 for help. Tragically, she did not survive. It then went on to say, quote, Ash is being unfairly charged with a dreadful crime and without competent defense, he could spend the rest of his life in prison. How can they do that? How can they just say that Helene like just died in his home? Like it was some sort of accident. Her injuries do not occur from an accident. But it gets worse than that he does because this GoFundMe account, this campaign to defend Ash, he raised a few thousand dollars. Mm -hmm, yeah, but not just that. Some of Ash's followers that had fangirled over him, they were now setting up Instagram pages supporting him. People were saying how much of a sweetheart he is and that he is this zen person. Like on the show, he was portrayed as this person that loves meditation, that he's peaceful, that he is zen. And people truly thought that that is what he was like in real life. Not seeming to realize that reality TV is scripted and that is not actually who he is as a person. That is the role that he played. But some people out there truly thought that he was this peaceful, Zen guy and that in no way was he capable of murder. And people were campaigning that he should be released immediately and it's just crazy. So Ash was continuing on pleading not guilty to his crimes. He even had a load of ex-colleagues supporting him. It is just crazy how much support Ash actually did get. People seem to have 
completely overlooked that a young woman has lost her life. Even if for some strange reason you think that it was an accident, she has still lost her life and the way people were being was so insensitive. But then in September of 2021, from advice I assume was from his lawyer, Ash Armand changed his plea to guilty. And then in December of 2021, Ash was put before a judge for sentencing where he was sentenced to 20 years for the murder of Helene. And I bet you're all wondering what the hell happened. How did such a brutal sadistic murder happen? And I don't know. Because obviously Ash is not talking. He's obviously only going with the self-defense story. We don't actually know what happened in the lead up to the murder on that evening. We can only speculate as to what happened. Some people have speculated that Ash was performing an exorcism because he was saying that Helene had this really dark negative energy around her and the fact that candles were found at the scene and Helene's body was covered in candle wax. Others have speculated that it was the drugs that he took on that night, the psychedelic drugs, it made him hallucinate. But then others have also suspected that it's because of the prolonged use of steroids. And this is kind of where I'm leaning towards because as soon as Ash started to take steroids, his personality just completely changed. He did become quite an angry, violent person and he was taking steroids for years. And he was taking a cocktail of other drugs on top of the steroids. It literally was just a recipe for disaster. Now, why all of a sudden did he have this violent outburst? We probably will never know. But the most likely answer is that because of the steroids, because of the drugs that Ash took on that night, it led him to lash out at Helene for whatever reason in a drug-fueled violent rage. And he committed one of the most brutal sadistic murders I've ever come across. But I want to end this video focusing on the victim of today's case. Helene Delay was described as a sweet, kind and caring person. She was given the nickname Happy Helene because she was just always smiling. She loved animals and children and she had such a kind, peaceful soul and she was incredibly close with her family. And whilst Helene still hadn't found her true purpose in life, she was on a path to discovery with so much love to give and her parents and family all miss her so much. She was taken far, far too soon and she was only 29 years old. And this is such a tragic, heartbreaking case. And I think one of the most tragic things about today's case is that there's no closure for Helene's family. They may never get the answers to the questions that they have. How did Helene get so brutally murdered? How did she even meet Ash in the first place? Like that is still up for debate. What exactly went on in their relationship? There is only one person that can answer those questions and he's not talking and who knows if he ever will. And I just truly hope that Helene's family are doing okay. So that brings us to the end of today's heartbreaking case. As always, let me know your thoughts, theories, and opinions. And don't forget to leave me your case suggestions in the comments down below, because I always want to know what you want to hear next. Thank you again to Mooncat for sponsoring today's video, and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye.